Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. Uh, as some of you may have seen over the weekend, I uh, I got into a little bit of a spat on uh, on Twitter um, with Sam Matterface. Now, what I what I would say is is that uh, Sam agreed to join us on the channel to discuss what was said on the, his show and what I'd said on Twitter. Um, and I honestly, so we have got Sam here. And I, first of all, let me just say, Sam, the fact that you've come on here um, obviously is is amazing to put your side of the case forward. You know, you said what you've you've had a couple of shows on Everton over the weekend. I had my say on Twitter, so it's brilliant that you've come on uh, to Toffee TV to to give your side of things and and have a little chat about what was said. So, uh, welcome to the channel, first of all. Well, listen, thanks for having me. Look, I I will always come on and and, and talk about stuff that involves fans. I think you know, well, sometimes we forget, or we we should, we make sure we never forget that fans are the most important things. And, um, you know, the one thing that we have to realise is that they've got to be at the forefront of everybody's mind. I think clubs forget sometimes just how important they are because, you know, you you, you read, I read, so many big decisions that are made at, at football clubs nowadays. They're all centred around business. They're all centred about how to make more money. And a lot of that is at the expense of the fans that, you know, want to go and see their team week in, week out. So, Look, whenever there's a whenever there's a misunderstanding between uh, two groups of people, it's best to get round the table and, and and thrash it out. Absolutely, absolutely, it is. Uh, let me take you back to Sunday. Obviously, you did your show, and first, yeah. first of all, I watched your, your clip on PSR, and I thought you were absolutely spot on. By the way, your P, your PSR conversation um, on that and, and where it's taking football, but I, mm. I was not happy. I'll, I'll be admit, I was not happy with the conversation. I, I, I worked, I worked <laughs> that out really. I mean, the, the first, the first thing I'll say is this: is that is, is the one thing that I never do, and look, it's, mm. I do. I work for Talk Sport, I work for ITV, I work for loads of different people. Yeah. And, and, and and the one thing I will never do is try and be sensationalist and cause a stir. Mm. Now, I think yeah. you know, and you know how it works. I work on a radio station. That radio station is, is at this moment in time sort of morphing between being a radio station and a YouTube channel. There'll be stuff that goes out on YouTube that isn't absolutely representative of everything that we've said over the course mm. of a five-hour program. And people see little snippets of it and they react to it. Now, the... The last thing I want to do is, is 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 cause anybody alarm or cause anybody issues, and I don't want to upset anybody, and especially not Everton fans. Uh, you know, I've I've worked with Everton before. I know a lot of people at Everton. I actually got a phone call yesterday um, afternoon from the Everton team, and 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 Scott and Dave. Who I, oh, I know Scott. I know very well uh, Dave and Rob, uh, who, who worked there. Darren, who's been there for a very long time. They, they're people I communicate with on a regular basis so you know I, I'm cl I, I would say that Everton were one of the clubs I was probably closer to than, than many others and you know I've spent a, lo a load of time at, at, at Everton as you probably know mm. but um, I think that the, the sort of the issue was here is that we, we did a piece on 777 partners really and that was the, the main thrust of it you, you, you did like the last bit which was about mm. where Perry was talking about how when vultures find out that you've got you know, you've got mm. um, bills to pay, et cetera, et cetera, then they will swoop and they'll try and devalue your players. I don't actually think that that was the wrong thing to say. It was, he, he was right. You know, people will do that. And if you speak to, I spoke to Alan Pardew today, he suggested exactly the same thing. You speak to even Dara suggested the same thing yesterday during his clip. You know, the people will come after you if they think that you're vulnerable. The issue that I think... I had with it was that the overall discussion was about okay the overall discussion was really centered around the fact that Farhad Mashiri in my opinion and we all have our opinion um was that he was mm. negligent in in suggesting that this great club this grand old club should be sold to 777 partners and I have done a lot of research on 777 partners mainly because mm. I was very sad during lockdown and got attached to Hertha Berlin, a club that 777 Partners also are interested in. And so many other clubs as well who have had issues with them. And my problem mainly centres on the fact that Farhad Mashiri tried to make out that it was the first time that he realised 
uh, that uh, there could be a problem a couple of months ago with 777 partners and now was looking at alternatives. And I thought, how on earth can you think that mm. when the information has been out there for so long that these people are not great people to be custodians of this football club? Simple as that. Um, I think the conversation then went on to other bits and pieces. And yes, we did talk about the players, but it was a more of a speculative thing. It wasn't a, this person's going to definitely leave, this person's going to definitely leave, this person's going to go. And it's going to be 70 million quid. Obviously, yeah. we know that Bram Faye is worth more than that. No, I, un- I, get, I, I, I appreciate all that. I mean, can you understand why I was angry, though? Because an, an Evertonian, honest, the last 12 months have been... An absolute nightmare to be an Evertonian. Oh, we no. just it's being a, that, though, just really. being an Ev- Well it is, it is. And and I everything you said there about Triple Seven is 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 absolutely spot on. They were never fit to be Everton known as in my in my opinion. Um but Perry Groves said that administration was was basically going to happen if we didn't have a fire sale. And that's what that's what it Well, the, I don't think he ever used the word fire sale, but he um but I, well, I, I've I, got I, a, listen, I, I've got a clip of him saying those exact words. So okay, well, listen. So, if he if he said that, that's it. That's not me. That's him. No, but, no, uh, I'm not. My, and I'm not saying. I'm not saying it is you. By the way, I'm just my, saying that's my, what my point. My point was is that I had, and I've, I actually looked back to see what was written down on my no. paper, and I remember looking at the piece of paper and going, um, I, "I've got it written down here." Everton suggesting no admin. Can this be the case? So I think Perry had mm. seen. I think Perry had seen and took his information from because Perry, I know you put on the on the thing that Perry was reading off a script given to him by a producer. I can categorically tell you that's not the case. Perry is one of the most diligent he, people. He works okay. very hard, does, does it all He's, himself. Right? So he would have what he would okay. have done is he would have read something somewhere where he had picked that out of the conversation. Yeah. Now, subsequently, because of our conversation, right? And probably this is great in a good in a good way. Yeah, loads yeah. of people have come to me with lots of information. It's encouraged me to get deeper into the story as well, which is, I think, a good thing. Um, and actually, mm. I, I, I then found out that there was a story. Someone did do a story saying about Firestale and about um, Brand, was it Brandthwaite having to go for forty million or something yeah. like that? Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the and the club yeah. and the club sort of pushed that yeah. to one side. I suppose the issue is. Mm. Is we can we we can all take what the club says face value, right? And the club tell us that oh, yeah, they yeah. Don't, that they don't need to sell, and there's no problems here, and you know we're going to be fine. We're a self-sustaining model now, and everything's going to be okay. And we all cross our fingers, and we go, yeah, we hope that that's the case. But you also said to me you looked at that video that Kieran Maguire did, yeah, with us when he was mm. with me and Dara, yeah, and he and he outlined yeah, those did, yeah. the debts. The two hundred million to seven seven seven, the one sixty to MSP, the two hundred twenty five to sports media rights and people like that, mm. and the fact that six hundred million pound in debts before we even talk about the the stadium and, and and the situation with the 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 possibility that if there was a, and I don't think they'll go into administration. I know they won't go into administration because no one's stupid enough to put them into administration because they'll never get their money back if they do that because mm. only football creditors get their money yeah. back. Um, but um, I think that there is issues and I think those issues are always worth addressing. Now, I do think that maybe sometimes with opinions, people will say things that fans don't like because I know it's sensitive. Totally get it. Totally and utterly get it. Because if, if your club's going through the ringer, the last thing you want is for other people to start what, perceive, what you perceive to be sticking the knife in. That's not what they're doing for opening a conversation. We're not Everton. Mm. We're not Everton fan TV. We're not you guys. We're not... We're not mm. concentrating on it. We're broadcasting to a wider audience and people talking about wider things to do with Everton. Mm. It's definitely not, from my point of view, it's not targeted at winding Everton band up. Oh. I, listen, I have no problem with anyone sticking the knife in Everton. I am I am not I am not a sensitive person <laughs> when it comes to Everton. I, it's, it's, I, no, I honestly don't. I was, I was, I was, you know, when the marches took place, I was on the marches. I've been doing stuff like that for, for, for over 10, 15 years. I've been, you know, uh, my my name at times has been mud at the football club as well. It's there's no I've got no issues with that. I think my issue with this particular video was it just didn't feel like like it was particularly uh, well sourced. I mean, I know you mentioned Perry goes there. He said there was two million two hundred million pound left to pay on the stadium. That is utter nonsense. I mean, that really is nonsense. The stadium is practically you know six months away from being finished. 
And I just think there was times in, in the conversation, because you're absolutely right, you should be talking about, you're a national radio station, you should be talking about these things. And 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 we we we, lo- we love good good conversation that mm. either uh, points the finger at, you know, Fad Mashir if he's done something wrong, Sean Dice if he's done something wrong, I played if he's done something wrong, no problem with yeah. that. That's, that's our bread and butter, that's what we do for a living as well. My, I was angry because it just the conversation just seemed to get away from some of the uh, some of the what is actually going on because obviously I t- I'll, I'll, I'll accept I'll, t- I'll tell you I'll totally accept the fact that there was a point towards the end of that conversation where Perry was leading it and I wasn't mm. uh, as uh, it did t- he did he did take he talked about the the fire side of the players and the administration yeah he was talking about something different. And I can't answer for where he got his oh, information no, no. from for that or whatever. But what I can say is, is that yeah, you're right. It did move away from the issue. It did. It totally moved mm. away from the issue. Because- and I do think that, that, that those that that conversation about the players probably was just a bit clumsy. And I admit yeah. that it probably was a bit clumsy. But the um, the the point I was trying to get, and I was trying to make it to you on Twitter actually, or whatever it's called now, <laughs> was that. There are bigger issues oh, than, there are. Than, than my mathematics. There, there and, I, and as much as I, it was it was clumsy, the most important thing is the preservation of this football club. And yeah, I do hope, I do hope that these debts that are, they've racked up, the stadium, everything gets sorted out. I do. Yeah. But do you do Go you on. really trust Farhad Mashiri to sort it out? Bearing in mind what you've yeah. been through since he has been there. He may well have the best of intentions, mm. but this is a guy that on so many, of occa- so many occasions has appointed the wrong manager, bought the wrong player, sit, said to the manager, you can do this, you can do that, and then gifted him a player yeah. at the wrong time and, 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 and got involved in things that he shouldn't be getting involved in because he makes decisions on a whim because he's yeah. the owner and he can do what he likes. So that's that's my that's my concern and that's where i wanted to focus my mm. energies no i think i think you are right i mean there's some far as we we've we've lived through this we we lived with the beginning mm. of it we thought it was going to be amazing and then we've watched we've watched it obviously closer than than most people have and 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 again yeah. that's 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 where absolutely that's where what as with what we do with our channel is is that we're obviously trying to make sure the facts that get out are really important, and 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 again, as I said, that as a yeah. national radio station, I think the conversation you had yesterday with with with, with Dara was really important on on Monday morning, and, and having a yeah. financial expert was really good because then you get a true idea. Um, why I think I, why I was angry, and a lot of Evertonians was angry, is because we've watched our club be dragged through the mud for the la- for the last year, for the last two yeah. years, no, not not by not only by people in the media, but people within our own football club as well. Who've been we've been fighting against the fans and when you're hearing people on national radio station like you know the the biggest the biggest radio independent radio station in the country the commercial radio station talking about players being sold for 75 million when our club have reiterated that someone like um Branthwaite who obviously made his England debut last night a a, a mm. once in a generational uh player uh, English six foot five fast can play can play with uh, left footed can play uh, some fantastic football of course that we're going to sell him for anything less than I don't know, 60, 70 million, when there's a 15% uh, add-on to give to Carlisle as well. We, we, th- this, is a, this is a situation for us where we truly believe. We know we're going to have to sell players. We know there's a big... Dominic Carvalho, I, you, you, I know you mentioned Newcastle, and that is reality. Newcastle probably will come calling, and he has only got a year left on his contract. That is reality, and we're all w- well aware of that. We're all well aware that O'Nan will probably be sold. It's, it's just the casual nature, because people, Everton fans are are very, very worried at the moment. This weird administration is getting knocked around and it's been knocked around by some some of our own fans who should know better. And it's, mm. it becomes a very, very worrying thing, especially when you have got a stadium that's got six months left to build. That is seen as the future. When Sean Dice, who has done a magnificent job, you know, today, even just today, we, Everton have let uh, some some youngsters leave the club yeah, today. I was watching your show, I was watching your show earlier. You know, they, they're youngsters who've been on the bench um, for the latter start stages of the season, we've got a fan base that is very, very worried at the moment. And I just thought, and I'm not saying you, but you've just said yourself, maybe you should have led that show better. I think the media does have a responsibility. And I think Darren made that point yesterday to you brilliantly, is that, you know, he, he said about the athletic, is that you start banning these words around like administration and more and more people start believing it. And Everton did put some out last week saying that, that word getting thrown about really does start affecting deals that they have with sponsors and and and, and, and even bringing in players so 
to, to me, that's what I mean. That's why I mean I'm f- I, I'm a little bit I'm fiercely protective of my football club. But to of me, course. my football club is like family. It really is like family. I see it like, and it shouldn't the, shouldn't. The really... only thing I will Go say on. about that is the only thing I say Go about on. that is 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 I'm totally on the side, and yeah. I, I and I do believe that we have a responsibility to get things right, mm. and that is you know that is why as soon as I thought I like not been a hundred percent over the whole of that conversation and controlled that conversation. Yeah. Even if it was maybe not me that said the things that it blamed it or whatever. I, I went, I made it my business to ensure that the day afterwards mm. we covered it with Kieran. We got Dara's view on it. I've spoke to so many people, but this, this is the issue. You said there, the club have put it out there asking mm. people not to use the word admin not to to suggest that this is going to be happening and this is going to be happening and that they're not going to sell this player or that player mm. you know even with the communication that i had it was almost a bit of you know, we're not going to do this but then at the end of the conversation it was well, we might have to do this and it is our job to interrogate that yeah to absolutely test that, to see where where that goes because i don't want to be in a situation where i'm spouting well, someone has told yeah. me, it's not my, I'm supposed to be a, a journalist who's trying to find out the facts. And this is a journey, right? Okay, yeah. We're on a journey to find out the facts and find out what's happening. I, I, want to, I, I want to interrogate what I'm told by a football club so that I'm not just saying, yeah, they said it's going to be okay. And then three months down the line, it really isn't okay. Yeah, yeah. Because if I'd asked Farhad Mashiri a year ago, in fact, if I remember rightly, didn't he write a letter to you guys <laughs> saying to you, everything's going to be okay and I'm going to buy you this striker or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, a few, and, and then none of those promises ever came true. Mm. So we have to be, we do have to be a little bit careful about, yes, being protective about the brand because you don't mm. want it to be diminished, but also at the same time realising that sometimes they let us down, you know, mm. as supporters, they let <laughs> us down. They tell us things are going to happen that don't happen. You know, yeah. it's not beyond the realms of possibility that all these things can happen because of the debts that we've already spoken mm. about. Because we, look, if you, one of the things that we didn't really touch on during that uh, Kieran Maguire and Dara interview in detail was the PSR situation. Yeah, yeah. You know, Everton last year were in breach of PSR. You know, because we've had a private conversation about this, I hate PSR. Mm. It's the most ridiculous system that the Premier League has invented, probably since VAR. It's, it's worse than VAR because what it does is, is it kills young talent and the career proje- uh, trajectory at your club from the people that you've developed. Yeah. And I think that's wrong. I think that's mm. so wrong. But if Everton are in a situation where they do need to trade in order to, to get under the PSR limit, that is a sto- that is a story. That is a talking point. We, we, people will know about that, mm. or people will be trying to find out about that. I think what Dara said was brilliant yesterday. The club need to show some leadership. They need to come mm. out. They need to talk about it. They need to say, "This is our situation. This is where we are." Now, listen. I've spoken to them. They tell me that they're it's a new sustainable model that they're going to. Uh, they may have, they may have to trade. Um, over the course of this summer, but they'll do it on their own terms. Let's hope that that's the case. Let's hope that they are right and that is the is the, the, the uh, that is the case. But one of the things that they, we don't know is how much money it costs to run Everton. Mm. I don't know. Do you? Yeah, yeah. They seem to go through a lot of money. Well, there's a. <laughs> I mean, as you've mentioned already, there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of players who are on very high wages. Some of them have now left. You know, someone like Andre Gomez has just left the club. He was reported yeah. to be Everton's highest earner. You know, a player who Which bit, is ludicrous. Yeah, it? it's ludicrous. And don't get you you're, you're right to be. You know what what has happened in the in the period between 2017 to obviously through COVID and through the situation with Everton losing sponsors because of the war in Ukraine has been yeah. has been ludicrous. It has been we we you know anyone who's ever watched this channel knows my opinion on on Everton's board and on the people who were who were on Everton's board everyone you know I I I did not f- have those people in high regard and I'm I'm very very worried about Farad Mashiri as the owner of Everton Football Club triple seven I had no time for whatsoever mm. um uh, and I do I believe now that with Kevin Felwell and with Sean Sean Bash, I think we've got sensible heads at the football club. But of course, that's just the football side of, of things. We don't have people on the other side. We don't have a full-time CEO. We only have three members of the board, and Farad Mashiri is one of them. 
Yeah. It is still very a very, very dangerous time. I think, you know, you've just mentioned the, the club. You are right. The club did brief journalists last week about the situation. And you are very, you are right to be very sceptical about that. You are a journalist. It is your job to ask questions. I think Everton fans sometimes worry that journalists don't ask the right questions at the right time. Or certainly, or certainly aren't, or aren't asking or aren't asking the right questions at, at a time right now. And I think that's what I that's get. That's why I think our conversation is really productive. Yeah, because I, do, I yeah. do believe this is true. You have made, you have made me take so much more notice of these particular mm. figures. I've spent so much more yeah. time than I would have done and probably is healthy finding out more information <laughs> about Everton. Well, it's a big story though. Politics. That's, that's the thing, Sam. Story. It's it's a... story. And, and the other thing is it, I don't really, it's not really my remit. I don't really cover yeah. it. I'm, I, I don't, we, our show really is not a, 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 a in-depth journalistic show on a Sunday. It's not an mm. in-depth journalistic show. It's a live football show. You know, we, we had a discussion about it because I was particularly interested don't, in it. Don't but, you think that's part of the problem though? Is that, and not just about your show, but other shows, is that we skate over these subjects so thinly that we're not getting down to the bot to the, to the real nits and grit, nits and gritty of it because Evan, this oh, I, story. I think Jim and so- I think Jim and Simon's show is particularly oh, yeah. particularly good at, uh, at dr- drilling into that, and that's what that show mm. is about. That is yeah. the talk sport show that goes into the detail. Listen, and I, it's so it's so like today. I'm not. I, I can't tell you how many people I've, I spoke to, and my issue is this: one of them told me Everton are fine. Yeah, talk to me about the people that are owed money. Told me I know who exactly I, I knew, already knew who they who they owe money to. But one character in particular who I think has the opportunity to turn their loan into equity will not do that because they believe that uh, uh, they, they don't want to take hold of mm. or control of the football club. So, but they won't call the debts in because, as you you were talking about the stadium mm. earlier on, if you do call the debt in and the club did end up in a, in a financial situation mm. and the credit and the builders that are going through the final stages of uh, Bramley Moor oh. dock down tools, it would it over inflate the cost if they were to tear up that contract of course. and start again. Right. So that, that can't happen. And mm. no one wants to see that happen. It's nobody's interest that the club goes into administration no. because we've already mentioned no one gets paid in those, in those matters. But I seen, spoke to somebody else who was part of another club who suggested that actually there is a problem. There's a big problem with the PSR. And you're getting all this conflicting information mm. from different sides. From and, and there is so many different sides. I just think it's worth being cautious about it mm. rather than saying everything's going to be okay. Oh, I so, hope it is going to be okay. Well, certainly no one believe no one on this side of the fence, certainly Evertonians, think that everything is fine and rosy in the garden. Like you've just said there, it's a case of certainly for the creditors, it's you know, if I owe you ten pounds, that's my problem. If if I yeah. owe you a hundred million pounds, that's your problem. And that's yeah. where Everton are right now. They're in that situation where um we owe money. But also let's let's not forget, you know, the people say we owe a billion in, in, in debts. Four hundred and fifty is to the owner, and that's getting written off. I mean, let's get that yeah. right. That's getting written off. He's never seen that money ever again. You know, the no triple chance. the triple seven money, nobody knows what's ever good because we don't know if triple seven are gonna exist in the next month or two with the with the things you know, you, you talked about it with some of the civil cases that are going on in America. Some of yeah. the cases. So we don't know if they're gonna exi- exist. P- MSP, of course. They they're not going to call that in because as you've just mentioned the stadium and rights and, and media funding they're a, they're a legitimate uh, loan company that are being that's a lot that's a long term exactly long-term that that's been around for a very long time and they're not they're getting paid they're not bothered and as Keelan Maguire mentioned to you Everton are paying the are paying the salaries they're paying everything else um so so the administration where it has been thrown around and yeah, that's and it, not going to happen. No, no, and that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of scary stuff. That's what that, I think. That's the crux of 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 my of my whole thing is that there's a lot of scary words getting thrown around, and Everton are a mass. This should be a huge story, and I understand why it isn't because we're not we're not one of those. Well, is, I think it is a huge. No, story. no, but I, I think under- people are doing. I, I, I talk to, we're talking about it for oh, that I know. reason. I think. I think again, it's difficult because I know you work for the radio station, and I can't I can't come on your radio station. That's just a that's just that's just the position I'm in, uh, and I know a lot of Everton are in a similar position and that's just that's just what it is and I don't really want to go into that um and I know I know people at your radio station do go into that quite uh, uh, quite a lot but you're absolutely right you're getting you're getting different stories from different people and again that comes back to the football club to be 
to be uh, show that leadership to 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 have people and a CEO who's who's uh, who understands the situation to have an owner that talks to the fans and as you said he did something last year where he spoke to the fans advisory board and he promises a striker and it never happened so anything he says now the fans really do take with a pinch of salt yeah. it's it's quite laughable now um, the leadership does come from the manager. I've not always been, been brilliant. I've not listen. I've not always been Sean Dyche's brilliant. biggest fan because I am a football fan and I do let my heart leave my head quite often. Which <laughs> you you've already seen. We all do. You've already we seen a touch do. of that. And and sometimes he hasn't been my favourite person, but then he wins a Mayside side derby, so I love him now. But he has shown great leadership. And Kevin Felwell told us all at the end of the season that we would have to sell players. Um, so those two have, have, have led or are leading. So you're right, we do need someone to come out. But when people talk about our football club, we do need more conversations like you had yesterday, I think, than the one you had on Sunday where it's... Yeah, OK, well, I, I think we have more conversations. I do have yeah. more conversations like Monday than we yeah. do like Sunday. I, I, you know, OK, you know, <laughs> you can be annoyed with, with Sunday and you can try... You can try and make out that's what we do all the time. No, no, that isn't. No, I and I and I and I genuinely believe that the way we, the way we behave, the way I try to make sure my shows behave, is in a responsible, sensible manner, manner to try and get to the nub of the issue, mm. properly trying to understand what the situation is with the people that you can. But you cannot always get that a hundred percent right every single time, as much as you try. Yeah. And when you don't get it a hundred percent right then you've got to make sure you do get it 100% right at the next available yeah. opportunity. Yeah. So hence why, uh, you know, I woke up on Monday morning, I didn't have a clue what was going on. <laughs> I honestly didn't know what the, I, I didn't know what the, what was going on. I was like, what? I don't, who's got offended? I don't understand. But that's because maybe I'd been away for a week on holiday and mm. I hadn't been what, reading the papers every single day last week. I wasn't aware of the, the articles that had caused offence the week before. So I, yeah, mm. so I, I was talking from a different yeah. a, a different vantage point. But I think the key thing is, is, is to hope that what happens next season, what happens early this summer window, is that they get the playing squad into a situation where they can compete. Because if you look at what Sean managed to achieve with one and a half hands tied mm. behind his back, it's, it was impressive. It yeah. was impressive. Yeah. They were never in relegation trouble until mm. the points deduction. Yeah. And even then, did you really feel they were going to go down? Because I didn't. <laughs> but that's because but that's because I'm not yeah. as emotionally connected to no, it no, no. as you are. No, I know, I know. Um, and so- yeah, the derby was great, by the way. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. I did the derby. I commentated on the derby and the, 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 the Liverpool fans weren't happy about it, but no. you guys were. And the yeah. atmosphere was good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was about time, wasn't it, I suppose, yeah, after yeah. all those Oh, years. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, listen, we... we I mean, I, every fan will say this, but I know, I know, we very much know this as a fact. We absolutely live and breathe, breathe this all the time. Like Evertonians, do. don't stop. Like you know, we get, we can do a show on a Wednesday and there's nothing to talk about and we find something to talk about and we hammer into it and thousands of people watch and they contribute and that's just that's just that's just the very nature of Everton fans and of course Liverpool fans I mean most fans in in most major cities we never switch off Obviously. we never switch off but what I want to say is I thank, real, just want to thank you for coming on because I think anyone Anyone who um, thought you were coming on might have thought that I'd go after you and it'd be a big, big, I'd make a big, I, I didn't want to have a big sensationalist thing. I want to have a proper conversation with Jen and I'm really glad yeah. that you came on and we've chatted a chat about it and, and we've got to the bottom of it because I do think it's really important because as you said before, more and more, more and more of these conversations are becoming sensationalised and are becoming... And that was never my point, by the way, to pick a clip out of of, of what you, you said and stick it on Twitter and, and make a big deal of it. I, I, I wasn't trying to do that. I was I was just trying to show that it, some of the things that... Were, some of the figures were just... felt very, very silly to me. So I'm, I'm really, really... I'm really, really pleased, really happy that you've come on and we've had a really good civil conversation. And just to show that you can still have a civil conversation in this world without uh, two people going was, after each other for, was, for clicks. It, it, listen, I appreciate you asking me to come on and and, and to discuss it. Um, you know, I'm more than happy to come on whenever you want. I, I'm I'm interested in every club, but I'm interested in especially the clubs that I cover the most, which are the ones in the North West, because that's where I live. So Brilliant. So, I will. Uh, I'll keep in touch. And nice thank you very one. much for having me. Good luck. Are you doing the Euro, Sam? I am doing the Euros. Brilliant. Yeah, I should. At this, I, I, I actually supposed to be spending the evening tonight in books and websites and research and 
I watched Scotland and England last night and um, I, I, uh, I thought I've got to write this up, I've got to write this up, I've got to write this up, but Brilliant. yeah, I'll do that later on. Oh, so, there, well, thank you for giving us your time, and uh, we might no, I we might come me. we might come back and pick your brains about some of the Euro stuff as well. So there you go. Yeah. Big thank you to Sam Matterface for joining us. Cheers, you, you can catch him on his radio station that I'm not allowed to mention <laughs> um, every every week, and he's obviously going to be doing the Euros as well. So Sam, thank you for coming on, and see you soon. Cheers, mate.